It's hard to imagine but Andrew had almost forgotten what his mother had done with his hair. He hung his head and his bunches flopped forwards, brushing his ears. The minibus continued its journey, picking up a few more boys and before long, drove through the gates of St. Felicity's School for Girls. The kids alighted and since Andrew is the only one not in uniform, the awaiting teacher knew he was one of the new boys. The driver spoke to the teacher and the teacher grilled Andrew as to where William may have gone. Anywhere really. Andrew claimed, listing the town centre, the arcade, the canal tow path, the cops on Hunters Hill. A few minutes later, the minibus driver exited the school building with a group of around eight or ten schoolgirls. Right girls. The boy we're looking for is called William Dowson, 13 years of age of 73 Routledge Avenue. His mother said he'll most likely be wearing a green parka jacket, blue jeans and brown monkey boots with yellow laces. And this boy will describe his face. The girls, all of whom must be 14 or 15 years old surrounded Andrew. They towered over him as he sheepishly described William's hair colour, style and facial features. Is he taller or shorter than you? they asked. Uh. A bit taller. Andrew replied. Thin or stocky? Uh. Neither. About the same as me. Andrew told them. The girls climbed in the back of the minibus whilst two teachers sat in the front. As the door slid shut, Andrew was certain one of them said something like, I love going on a boy hunt. The one remaining teacher looked Andrew up and down before assuring him they'd find his friend. Come on, let's get you settled in, she said. Have you got your sizes? Uh. Yes, miss. Andrew humbly replied before following the teacher inside. He glanced back towards the minibus as it pulled out onto the street. First, the minibus drove up to the estate on which William lives with his parents. All inside kept their eyes peeled for someone fitting the description they'd been given. Three of the girls got out to explore the alleys and snickets whilst the minibus drove slowly around the neighbouring streets. I love it when the boys don't turn up, one of the girls said. It's so much fun. Remember that one last year who we found hidden in a wheelie bin. He stunk to high heaven. Oh God yes, another replied. It was December and we had to have all the windows in the minibus open when we took him back to school. The minibus picked the girls up and drove them to the other places that William might be hanging out. There was no sign of him on Hunters Hill, nor in the arcade or town centre. But hopeful that his friend Andrew would have also absconded early, William hung out in their usual haunts on the off chance they'd meet up. He bought a packet of cigarettes from a kiosk and lifted a packet of opal fruits whilst the cashier's back was turned. He blagged a light of an old man who said he was too young to smoke, but gave him a light nonetheless. Shut up grandad, was William's reply before walking away, sucking on a regal king size. The girls drove all round town several times with no joy. By now it was 9.30, but they weren't disheartened. They'd much rather be out and about, hunting boys than stuck in class. The minibus was parked and everyone got out. They separated into four groups of three and went in opposite directions, sweeping a quadrant of the inner city each. Meanwhile, William was holed up in a run-down cricket pavilion. But boredom and a desire to smoke another cigarette, which meant getting a light of someone, forced him to vacate the secluded hideout. He decided to saunter along the canal for two reasons, one, not many people apart from those enjoying the futility of fishing and two, a fisherman would likely have some matches. He was right on both counts and soon found a light for his cigarette. The kindly man even gave him the remainder of his box of matches, which although almost empty, contained plenty for his remaining cigarettes. You skipping school son, the man asked. None of your business mister. William spat before walking off. No need to be like that, the man said.